Earlier this week, Apple released iOS version 12.4, and in it, they have significantly changed the way that setting up a new iPhone is performed. So prior to iOS 12.4, there were really two ways you could set up a new iPhone, through iTunes, no one did, or you could go through the setup process that would restore your data through iCloud. Now, in that iCloud restore process, there were really two ways you could perform an iCloud restore. One was manually by setting up your Wi-Fi, logging into your iCloud account, and then selecting the backup that you wanted to restore, or a new feature introduced about two years ago or so, you could use your old iPhone to scan a code, and that would automatically hand off your Wi-Fi credentials, your iCloud account info, and restore your new iPhone with the most recent iCloud backup via the internet. It was pretty slick, but in iOS 12.4, that all changes. And it's kind of weird because there doesn't seem to be much visual indication that there's a big difference, but there really is. There are now four ways to transfer backup data to your new phone. Method one, which is an iTunes restore. Method two, which is an iCloud restore. And by the way, both of these methods are the same as they have always been. So method one, on iTunes restore, everything except for your app binaries are transferred locally. All your photos, videos, contacts, messages, app data, settings, and more are transferred from the backup file locally stored on your computer so long as that data isn't already present in iCloud, according to Apple. More on that in a second. And method two, the iCloud backup obviously downloads everything via iCloud, the internet. But there are two new ways to restore a new iPhone. Method three, transfer from iPhone over Wi-Fi, and method four, transfer from iPhone over a wired connection. Now, methods three and four both act similarly to iTunes in that they transfer everything not present in iCloud except for your app binaries. With method three, rather than establishing a Wi-Fi connection to your router and downloading everything via the internet like an iCloud restore, transfer from iPhone makes an ad hoc Wi-Fi connection to your old iPhone and then transfers data directly from the source. Method four is nearly identical in functionality, but rather than using local ad hoc Wi-Fi, it utilizes the Lightning Camera Connection Kit. You can plug the adapter into the destination phone, and then you plug the lightning cable into the source phone. Isn't that so elegant? I mean, way better than USB-C to USB-C, and then, <laughs> thank you, Apple. So those are the four methods, but which should you do, why, and which is the fastest? We've done a lot of friggin' restores over the last two days, and we have determined in our testing the following. First off, every single backup method re-downloads your apps from the App Store. As of last year, app binaries have been thinned and fingerprinted to each individual device to A, prevent piracy, and then B, to reduce how much local storage apps take up on your phone. But what that also means is that you've gotta re-download all of them regardless of backup method. In terms of raw speed, iCloud restores remain the fastest. This, of course, is because unlike other methods, it only transfers core data initially, and the remaining content either just hangs out in iCloud until the user requests it, or it continues to download non-crucial data in the background several hours after the restore is allegedly completed. The iTunes and transfer from iPhone over Wi-Fi methods are similar in speed. And it's our opinion that these methods are worth the extra weight over an iCloud restore, as despite Apple's documentation, they actually appear to transfer everything present on the device being transferred from, including full resolution photos, complete message history, uh, more complete app data, etc., that is not transferred via an iCloud backup, despite Apple's indications contrary to the matter. Strangely enough, the transfer from iPhone over wired method was all over the place. The first time we tested it, it was quite a bit faster than the transfer from iPhone over Wi-Fi. Makes sense. The second time though, it just straight up failed. And the third time, it took nearly double that of the Wi-Fi transfer. Weird to think that Wi-Fi is more reliable than a wired transfer, but it's 2019. I mean, we live in the future. <sighs> future without USB-C. In conclusion, iPhone continues to flex on Android when it comes to easy backups and new device migration. What was already good gets even better. And we strongly recommend the transfer from iPhone over Wi-Fi method come iPhone 11. That is, if the iPhone is even worth upgrading to. I just burned iPhone and Android in the same sentence. <laughs> I'm so good at this. Thank you, sir. 
I don't deserve your thumbs up, but if you want to give them, great. If not, whatever. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay snazzy.